right, today we want to go over um, go over scheduling, go over time. I mean, at the end of the day, probably if I was going to pick one thing that keeps agents from succeeding and, and really the main difference between the successful agents and the agents that don't succeed, it's really, really, really simple. Uh, and it's just how you spend your time. That's it. It's how you spend your time. And I think, you know, a lot of agents, they just wake up every morning, they don't really know what to do, or they haven't made a plan what to do, um, or worse, they end up doing all of the wrong things. So, that being said, uh, to do things a little bit, uh, to, to make sure that we were set up for success and to make sure that we're doing the right things, I want to kind of go over um, where you're going to spend your time that's going to make you the most money uh, at, the end of the, uh, at the end of the day. And, course of your career. So in doing so, we want to break things into two, two categories, and we can get more into your individual schedule and, uh, and, and so forth on a different platform. But for right now, we want to break everything into two categories as far as the way you spend your time. Now, this doesn't include the time that you're going to spend eating lunch. This doesn't include, uh, I guess it could if that would have included some uh, prospecting uh, or a lunch meeting with a, a potential client or, or a friend that you're going to think you're going to refer a lot of. But this is really just about how you're going to allocate the time that you work. Um, I think it's very important to schedule that time. And yes, our lives do change daily and they do have different things that come up. But if we can schedule at least the most important activities so that we make sure those are a priority in our lives and a priority in our work days and a priority every single week, uh, that we get them enough time put in to get us the amount of people uh, that we need to talk to in order to turn enough of those people into business to make us successful in, the, in, in our career. So I'm going to get into that and really want to divide it into two sections. And one of those is prospecting, which this is really where your money's made. This is your job. Uh, you know, you can do all the fun stuff of going out, uh, showing properties, and it's always fun to look at the MLS and find houses and do all those other things. And maybe you had a thought and you wanted to look something up, you want some statistics, you want some things to that's all great, that's all wonderful. None of it matters whatsoever if you don't have any clients to work with or if you don't have enough clients to work with. So we wanna make sure that we get into prospecting. And when we talk about prospecting, we wanna allocate a time to that. And if there's anything that you're gonna have as a set thing on your schedule that you're gonna absolutely stick to and do every day, day in and day out, and make sure that the time was met and that you actually spent your time on that at the end of every single week, is prospecting. That's where you're going to meet all your new clients. That's where you're going to get all your business. That's where all of the contracts that you're going to write and all the houses you're going to show are going to come from. So without that, we have nothing. Okay. So uh, a couple of different prospecting activities, and I've got up here minimum 20 hours. Uh, the reason I've got that is I think that's the minimum that we really should spend on an average week uh, working on getting new people. Now, we can get into how many contacts we need to make, we can get into talking to how many people we need to talk to, uh, but in general right now for scheduling, we just want to make sure that these, these activities are scheduled and that we are doing them. So a couple different things. First of all, as you remember, of course, this brokerage, uh, we do provide a lot of leads for our agents. Uh, so those leads, yes, we are going to talk about needing to call them right when they come in, but they don't always answer right then. So that could be a different time of day. We respond to them. Uh, then we also have to have our scheduled time, which is when we're calling the ones that we either have talked to before, we're like a follow-up call, or maybe we're talking to the ones that uh, the lead came in yesterday and we called them and they didn't answer the phone. They came in uh, in the morning and now it's the afternoon and we want to try them again. So that stuff that we need to have, make sure that ha that happens, that's where our clients are going to come from. So yes, calling company generated leads uh, or calling your own leads that may have come from other sources. Uh, that's a wonderful time thing to, to, to make sure that we allocate our time for. Uh, we also have uh, follow-up calls to the other leads, which we just talked about. Uh, hold open houses. Um, I mean, if you were to make sure that it's part of your regular schedule that you are holding open houses consistently and you're going to put open houses as part of your system. We'll do a, a whole other section for how to do open houses and how to turn those into things. But the main thing is, is to be consistent. Every single thing that you do, if you do consistent systems and you follow them every single day and every single week, then the business will take care of itself. So open houses is one way to do that. And so an open house, uh, you know, we're only going to count the hours 
that the actual open house is open because that's the only time we're actually prospecting. Now the exception would be if you did go out and you went to the neighborhood, maybe you knocked on the doors and delivered flyers and met the neighbors. Well, that would definitely count for prospecting time as well. But the main reason we want, main thing we want to make sure we're doing is only counting our hours here if we're actually doing something that can prospect and gain and gain new business, which is not when you're walking around setting up signs, it's not when you're researching the neighborhood to open house, do the open house, it's only the open house itself for whatever that might be, usually it's about four hours or so that you hold the open house open, okay? So then we could do attending networking events. Now, that sounds way, way more fun and easier, right? You go to a networking event, you might have uh, a good time, you enjoy yourself socially. Well, it only counts if you're getting contacts. So you better get some contacts and, and you know actually have conversations about real estate and who you are and what you do um, and, and let people know that you can help them. Uh, you might be trading business cards. It's great to give yours out, but you need to also leave with some that you plan on contacting. Those people, you're going to take them, you're going to put them into your database and your CRM, and you're going to treat them just like a company-generated lead, and they're going to have a follow-up plan based on who they are, whether they want to buy in one month, uh, six months, a year, a year and a half. We'll build a plan accordingly. You build a plan out accordingly for them, and then they become your follow-up calls. Okay. So you could host an event for friend and fam friends and family. You might have a dinner at your house. You might host some kind of uh, local get-together with people and so forth. Once again, the, what's important about that is that we don't waste it. We want to make sure that we actually take the time when we're there to talk about the fact that we're in real estate, to talk about real estate in general, uh, to make sure that they know that you're in the business and they know that you do appreciate referrals. Um, the event does not have to be about real estate. It can be about anything in the world. Okay, uh, and, and, but as long as you're making the connection, at least the people that were there, they want to know that you want to know that how, how happy you are in the business and that you enjoy working at it and at least mention that you love referrals and remind everybody that this is what you do for a living, okay? And then we have call friends, family, meet, meet them in person. I mean, you know, a weekly coffee, a, 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 week, a weekly coffee with a friend, uh, a, pop by somebody's house just to say hey to them, catch up, uh, you know, Anything that can get you in front of people who already know you and also make sure that the conversation does include the fact that you're in real estate, the fact that uh, you enjoy what you do, the fact that you're a part of an amazing brokerage uh, that, that helps a lot of people and provides an amazing service and uh, you know all the cool things that we have, technology and so forth. You know, Just let your friends know how great it is and let your friends know that you would appreciate referrals. Same thing with family members. We don't necessarily, I've, I've never gotten into the whole idea of call and ask, hey, right now, can you help me out? I need a referral. You don't have to do that. You can. It works. But the main thing is that you consistently are staying in front of everyone and that you're consistently allowing them what you know, what, what, uh, to know that uh, it is what you are, in, in the business you're in, and let them know. Let them know that you love referrals. You can do it very softly. Okay? So we have that, and one of the things I want to make sure that we're doing is dividing the prospecting time from our servicing time. Okay? And what I mean by that is these are the activities that are going to get new people that you haven't gotten to work with yet business-wise to become potential clients for you. And then you're going to continue doing these activities to try to make sure that they're actual client that can be a transaction. Okay? They all won't. Uh, we're going to have to do a lot of calls, a lot of talking to people. And on percentage, most of them, the people you talk to, will not transact. We'll get into that uh, at another platform. But mainly right now, we want to make sure that we're generating, uh, we're calling all of our leads and that we're actually generating more leads in the, in, in the meantime as well. Uh, now, servicing. Servicing can make money. Um, there are some money-making activities that are in servicing. But as far as your scheduling is concerned, we really want to make sure that we divide servicing the lead from prospecting and creating the lead. And what I mean by that is a lot of times we'll call company-generated leads. Um, internet leads, we might call it open house lead, we might call it anybody. And we talk to them, we find out, hey, they're actually interested in buying in, you know, XYZ neighborhood or XYZ area, price point and so forth. And so what do we want to do? We want to hang up the phone and everybody wants to go ahead and go, hey, I'm going to start building their search. Well, the challenge with that is the mindset and the time. You were calling people and now you've stopped calling people and started servicing people. So your brain has just gone from the mode of wanting to contact 
people and actually stay on top of them and stay on top of that, that part of it, making more phone calls, talking to more people. Once you get in a rhythm of that, you're going to get better at it. And if you do it for an hour, an hour and a half straight, you're going to become really good at what you're saying as you get going. If you're stopping every time to service, then what's going to end up happening is just from going from calling to servicing, you're going to find out that you wasted time. From going back from servicing to calling, you've got to get mentally ready again and get back into wasting time. Uh, or get back and uh, do the right thing and not wasting time and spending the, uh, time on the phone. So instead, what I recommend is that we actually go and when we're for calling company generated leads, calling any other leads that you might have, make the phone calls while you're on the phone. Make some notes. We have a place in the that your broker provided CRM that you can put important notes. Make your notes there, um, and then maybe just jot their name down on a piece of paper. That way, you know to go back to it later. But you make the notes while you're on the phone call. All you have to do is jot their name down. Don't build the search yet. Just let the person know before you get off the phone call that they're going to have it by end of business day. You can say, "Hey, I've got some things going on. I'm an appointment. I'm doing. I'm, work, I'm working on some things. I'm going to have it to you by the end of the day today." Great. As long as you fulfill that and service it by the end of the day, you've done what you promised, and they're going to be they're going to be very happy with you. Okay. And obviously, it's probably going to be there way faster than that because you can as soon as you're done with your prospecting of the day, now you can go build your searches. So once again, instead of making a phone call, stopping at when, when you talk to somebody and building a search, instead of doing that, uh, we find it much better to actually make the phone call, just jot down some notes while you're talking to them, hang up the phone, make the next phone call. If you do that for an hour, an hour and a half straight, uh, that's fantastic. And uh, you're going to find that after about an hour, hour and a half, you need a break. Um, if you do need a break, I would take a break, walk around 15, 20, 30 minutes, and then you can come back in. If you've still got prospecting to do that day, you can continue again. You'll have a fresh mind. But for that good hour, hour and a half straight, you shouldn't do anything but make phone calls. Okay? We've got showing houses. Showing houses, obviously, that's where we get paid. So I see a lot of agents that they go, they finally get one client. Uh, first of all, you show them too many houses and let them drive the bus, and that's a whole different training platform uh, that, we'll that we'll do. But the, uh, the the main thing is you take all these houses, you're showing all these houses, and then you you spend, you got your one client, maybe two clients, uh, and you're working on building searches, you're working on showing houses, you're going to work with those people. Let's say you had two clients that you're spending all your time working with showing houses and building searches, and then what ends up happening is one of those clients buys a house, the other one, something happens to them, life happens all the time in our business, so maybe um, anything can happen, but for some reason they fell off and they're not going to buy a house until maybe next year, uh, maybe they lost their job, anything can happen. So you, you spend all this time allocating 100% of your time to showing houses and building searches, now you got one, one, con one other thing under contract, now what, do you, what people want, to, most agents want to do? They want to go take time to, uh, working on all, all this contract to close stuff. Well, of course, at our brokerage, we pay a transaction coordinator. A transaction coordinator is going to do 90% of what needs to be done from transaction to close. You still need to do your job, but, uh, but you need to let the transaction coordinator do their job so that you have time for prospecting. Okay? So what happens to a lot of agents? They end up working on that one contract. They call the lender, they want to do all of these other things that aren't really necessary to do, but you feel busy because you're servicing your contract and you think that's important because that's how you get paid. Well, yes, there's some basic things you need to do. In our brokerage, most of it is going to be handled, time-wise most of it anyway, is going to be handled by our administrative staff that we, that we employ. So, um, as, far as, uh, as far as it's concerned, going back to the problem with that, you've now prospected somebody, you've gotten somebody, you've shown them houses, you built them searches, you got them under contract, now you're spending all this time, and what happens is this 20 hours starts dwindling. So then finally you go close on this house maybe, you get a check for it and that's great, but now you've got no business in the pipeline. So when you get to your week and you're looking at your week and you're building your schedule, and I'm a firm believer that everyone should have a written schedule that they plan to stick to. Now everybody says, that's hard to do. Sometimes I get a showing here. Sometimes I get this there. Okay, great. I get that. However, if you can at least schedule this time and stick to it, I will guarantee you that if you can spend 20 hours every single week looking for new business by either calling your leads, following up on your leads, 
not building searches, but actually calling, following up, going to do an open house, maybe do a networking again, call friends and family, do a weekly coffee meeting, become a better friend, see your people, see, see people that you that, that you know, see them more often, reach out to acquaintances that are sort of friends, see how they're doing, see what they're doing in their life, you haven't talked to them in a while, check in on them and let them know that you're in real estate, call them back two or three months later, stay in touch with these people, have a plan to follow up with everyone all the time, fit that into a minimum of 20 hours a week, and I can promise you, if you make a habit of that, you're not going to have any problems making money in this business. The people that don't make money in the business don't do this. They're so intent on finding any excuse that they possibly can to work on all this stuff. There's other things that people work on too. Uh, I, I've gone back and I've looked at other versions of, bit of planning and scheduling and so forth where people talk about, oh, some of your time's got to go towards building your website. Some of your time has to go towards trying to figure out maybe what systems you're going to buy leads from. Some of your time might have to go towards marketing. Oh, here we do all that for you. We do it all for you. We give you leads. We give you top-notch websites. We give you everything that you need. And the whole reason that our system is built that way is to make sure you got time to go after clients and get new clients and then you've got time to service those clients and still get enough of them so that you can be a high volume agent. So at the end of the day, uh, what we're looking for is to come up with activities. They should be written down. They're a little bit different for everybody. Um, some people would prefer to do open houses once a week. Other people would prefer to set up a networking event. Other people would prefer to um, host, a, host a weekly or monthly event with friends and family. Other people might, uh, you know, prefer to do other items that can get you out there. This is not limited to just this. Like I said, an open house could also include knocking on doors in the neighborhood, introducing yourself to everybody, handing them a flyer and inviting them to the open house. All of those things work. But what's important is at the end of the day, at the end of the week, at the end of the month, is that you talk to enough new people, added enough new people in your database, and followed enough up with enough people who are in your database, where you've had enough conversations about real estate to turn into business. And I think the largest uh, reason people fail in a business is that uh, the, the perception of how much time you need to do and how much of that to really succeed is, is way off. And if you're not really putting in around 20 hours, you're brand new in this, if you're new in the business, especially, you've got plenty of time, plenty of time, especially at this office. You don't have to build a website, we do. You don't have to uh, worry about where to, you know, how to do marketing and branding. I, I, see me, we'll take care of it, okay? What you, all you need to worry about doing is meeting as many people as possible, having a conversation with them about real estate, making sure that every person that you meet and talk to is in our CRM, make sure that there's notes next to every single person, and make sure that every single person has a follow-up call in the future so that you can reach back out to them, talk to them again, and once again, it could be a friend or family member that you're just making sure you talk to once a quarter, and when you talk to them once a quarter, you're making sure that they know you're in real estate and that you, that you love referrals. You don't have to go, hey, I need you to give me one. Just make sure that they know, okay? And then let's talk about who that you have do you expect to be a referral generator. Let's make sure we pay attention to those people uh, and give them the, the, the attention needed to make sure that we retain them as a referral generator. And let's take the ones that might refer you and make sure we meet them enough and we're in front of them enough to where they want to refer you. What I mean by that is the difference would be, hey, I know someone wants to buy a house. Do you know anybody? And they might say, yes, I know you. Um, what we prefer is somebody just says out in passing, goes, hey, yeah, I'm thinking about buying a house. And without being asked, they go, you have to talk to this guy. That's what we're hoping to get. And so that is what consistent calls do to, to your database, consistent face-to-face -face meetings. If you can meet them in person, your chances of converting and get something out of it are going to multiply uh, versus if you're just going to talk to them over the phone. If you're going to text them, well, your chances are a lot better texting them if you can actually talk to them and if you can talk to them over the phone and then your chances become even more when you meet them. So keep all of that in mind that our goal is to talk to as many people as we possibly can, continue to add people to our database, and then make sure we're following up and keeping in touch with those people. Then we'll come over to the servicing side, but without the prospecting side, you've got no one to service. 
So if you're spending too much time on your servicing side or whatever else we might be wasting time on or whatever else we might think is important in the business, then you're shooting yourself in the foot where if you can just make sure that a minimum of 20 hours a week is written, it's on schedule, it's followed, and it is your absolute priority, three or four or five hours, whatever, here and there in the day. Um, I mean, you know, if you can just go after that as a goal, 20 hours a week are spent on some kind of prospecting activities, write it down, follow the system that we teach for follow-up, which is in a, di in a different training, uh, do all of that, and I promise you'll never be short of money in this business. Thank you, and I hope you guys have a wonderful afternoon.